coming from that direction. Come on, this is what we were waiting for. Johnny, these countries that are supplying weapons and personnel for this war in Ukraine, doesn't that make them legitimate bloody targets for Russia? Legitimate targets? Well, apparently so, Johnny. I mean, there are rules in war, which is a bit strange. I've always thought having rules. I mean, make a rule that you don't have a war at all. Right, yes, yes. There are rules in war, and apparently if Russia targeted some of these, even the countries, it would be seen as a legitimate act of reprisal. Oh, Jesus. Well, Germany and the United States yesterday announced plans to send tanks to Ukraine. The United States with Abrams tanks, Germany with Leopard 2 tanks. Poland also announcing it's sending Leopard tanks to Ukraine yesterday. And this morning, we learned that Portugal announced it's sending tanks to Ukraine, a country that I didn't even know had any tanks. Russia says that Europe is now expanding the target for this war, and Russia will see these as potential targets going forward. Have we just escalated things beyond where they were before? Yeah, I mean, that's what happened in World War II. They were, the Yanks were sending ships and planes and all sorts of shit over to England, and eventually Germany said, fuck that, we're going to sink them, and that's what they did. Parts. It's a UK-based operation which, which began in June last year with the aim to train 20,000 Ukrainian soldiers in 2023. Those deployed will join New Zealand, Canada and other European nations. It is worth noting though Australia has already assisted with 90 Bushmasters on the front line. Those are protected mobility vehicles. And of course, the government has already supplied $655 million to the Ukraine, with $475 million of that in military assistance alone. It so in theory, the plane carrying those 100 or so troops, plus support workers, I bet, over to bloody England to help train the Ukrainian soldiers, it could be legitimately shot down. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's what you do in a war, don't you? Scott Ritter is a former UN weapons inspector. He knows a thing or two about weapons and their implications. And he joins us on the show. Scott, great to have you back. Thanks for having me. We're doubling down on this. Now Russia, of course, amplifying its rhetoric over the past 24 hours and saying, this is an extension now of the targets, right? You're now opening up the targets. This isn't just the Ukrainian battlefield now. This, this gives... I mean, you can speak to that a little bit, what you're hearing from Russia now, that you're sort of expanding the battlefield beyond just Ukraine. We're now actively looking at, you know, you have Portugal announcing these tanks are going to be delivered through Spain. They're actively telling us how on rail lines they're going to be delivering these tanks through Spain. So they're going to be coming from Poland um, in all of these different locations. What do you make of that side from the Russian side of this now? Russia has every legal right, every legal right to attack any place in Europe that is involved in the transfer of these weapons to Ukraine. By agreeing to transfer these weapons to Ukraine, every nation that has said, yes, this is what we're going to do, has become an active participant in the conflict. And under the laws of war, Russia can take them out. Yeah, it just sort of dawned on me, uh, yeah, hang on a minute. You, you never hear a politician actually telling people that. I haven't heard a politician either, Johnny. I mean, they don't come out and say, we're going to send all this and uh, we're going to send all that and we're going to help the Ukrainian people, but uh, we should let you know that this makes us a target for bombing a nuclear strike. I'm sure the bloody general public are being deliberately kept in the dark with that stuff, aren't they? I think if the public were made more aware of that threat, they wouldn't be so bloody compliant. True. That's very true. Oh, I've got to help Ukraine over there. They're in all sorts of trouble. But when a bloody plane gets shot down or a base bombed or whatever, a ship sunk, it's all right. How dare they? Oh, Jesus. I mean, it doesn't really work like that. It's war. Not some bloody game of cricket, for Christ's sake. Well, it seems so. Here in Australia, we're all just sitting around going to the beach and worrying what's on Netflix. But, but, but Johnny, we, we just can't go on like this. It's, we're going to end up in fucking World War Three. So as usual, the politicians don't tell you the whole story because if you knew the whole story, well, you probably wouldn't agree with what they're doing. Why, well, yes, that's very possible. And the politicians think, well, because there's no real pushback on that, that must be tacit sort of approval for what we're doing. So we'll just do it. True. That's very true. And people don't know the whole story in the first place, for Christ's sake. Well, it bloody shocked me, that's for sure.